Welcome back to Chronicle. While many farmers are spending their fall out in their fields, an Omaha four-year-old is busy harvesting his crop right in the middle of the city. Urban ag is starting to take hold, and Chronicle's Abby Peterson shows us how it's inspiring a younger generation, including farmer techs. Sun shines down on corn stalks as they blow in the wind. Not an unusual sight for Nebraska, but these crops aren't in a field or outside of city limits. No, they're in the front yard of a West Omaha home and belong to four-year-old Tex Craven. That looks like it's really ready. Or Farmer Tex, as he refers to himself. I sometimes like hanging out in here. The idea popped into his head earlier this year. No, my favorite one's taller than that one. You think so? That one's pretty tall. As he and his mom sat at their front window. My favorite one's tallest. Watching a squirrel he named Early. Tassel. Tassel, yeah. And Farmer Tex thought Early needed something to eat. So they left out corn. We watched him for about 45 minutes. He would take a piece, eat it, and then what was left of it, he would just hop down and like sporadically in the yard place it. His mom, Autumn Craven, says he begged her and her husband to leave the corn early dropped. A few weeks later, it started sprouting and Tex was just like, you can't cut that, you can't cut that. Before they knew it, their front yard turned into Farmer Texas' corny prized possession. Everyone thinks it's pretty cool. We get a lot of people when they're walking by in the evenings doing their walks and they usually stop and look at it and ask questions about it and just say it's awesome. And Farmer Tex has fully taken on his new role. He's like the guardian of the cornfield. Which is serious business. I'll never ever pick that. He'll give us a tour. We do weekly tours of the corn. Farmer Tex won't even let his dad mow, so he's had to get creative. I've been weed eating my front yard all year. i always been thinking that he'll mow it. Yeah. And you don't want him to mow it, do you? Yeah. Why not? Because he's on my favorite. His parents say they're really proud because Farmer Tex is proud of his crop. It costs nothing to have a core memory, and what better core memory, right? Um, to have a cornfield in the middle of the city in the middle of the summer. A core memory started by Early the Squirrel, who even paid us a visit, a kid and his corn. Surely an amazing year the self-proclaimed four-year-old farmer will never forget. Reporting in West Omaha. Who doesn't love corn in Nebraska? Abby Peterson, KETV Newswatch 7. Who doesn't love corn in Nebraska? Texas Garden may have been unintentional, but organizations like City Sprouts are advocating for more intentional urban farms in the metro. Joining me right now is Aaron French, urban farm manager for City Sprouts. Aaron, thanks for joining us on Chronicle. Of course, thanks for having me. Well, we just saw farmer tax. Let's start with the basics. What is urban ag? Right, so urban ag is a, you know, thing we've been doing as humans since the beginning of time, growing food close to where we live in an effort to cut down on the time we spend hauling food, have access to better food. So anyone growing food in Omaha within city limits uh, is doing urban agriculture. And how does City Sprouts help with that? That's a great question. We kind of have three main pillars. We do it by building community uh, with neighbors around food. We do it by educating folks on how to grow their own food uh, and how to cook their own food. And we do it by growing and demonstrating by growing tens of thousands of pounds of food ourselves on our seven acre farm. What have you seen as far as the popularity of urban agriculture? Yeah, it's definitely boomed. I would say City Sprouts as an organization really took it to the next level. Uh, we had been farming on about a tenth of an acre pre-COVID. And then once the pandemic hit, uh, people had more time on their hands. Yeah. And we also saw the rise of food insecurity, which we already knew was around but it became ever more present uh, during the pandemic. So we went from growing on about a tenth of an acre to now we have a seven acre farm with about two and a half acres in production. So yeah, I think uh, COVID really helped. I think it's a fun, easy way for people to get outside. And I mean, the food you grow in your garden is better. That's quite a change in three years. Yeah. Um, how can organizations like City Sprouts and just Urban Ag in general, how can that make a difference in food insecurity? Right. So, I mean, I think, you know, one of the ways that City Sprouts really works to to address that issue is through the growing of culturally preferred or appropriate produce. Right. So we see uh, in Omaha a huge population of, of refugees, folks coming from other countries. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, a lot of them have issues accessing 
food that is important to them culturally. Um, things like, you know, malukia, sour leaf, uh, Thai eggplant. And we can grow those things here in Nebraska with ease, uh, but they're not always available at food pantries or the food bank, right? So we're trying to provide people access to food that culturally feels really good for them. Yeah. You, talk, you talked about the diversity. What about, what about the age diversity? We saw farmer techs. Is, yeah. is anybody too young to start? Not too young, not too old, right? We have, at City Sprouts, we have educational programming for kids Texas age, uh, all the way up to, you know, your grandparents' age. So um, we're building at some of our community gardens now. We're building um, raised garden beds that are uh, raised up even more, so they're mm -hmm. accessible for older folks, folks who can't bend down to access the garden in the ground. So trying to make it accessible. Absolutely. I saw the city of Omaha ha has recently changed mm -hmm. some zoning regulations, yeah. right? How, how has that impacted urban farmers? Yeah, it essentially, what it's done is it's codified urban farms, right? It was, pre to, prior to this, it was essentially the Wild West. Um, you could kind of do anything, but also you kind of couldn't do anything, right? And, and what the city has done with this um, and a lot of really great urban ag partners is kind of write down some regulations that we can all follow uh, when it comes to structures, when it comes to the type of growing right. that you're doing, where you can sell. Um, you know, I don't think any, everything in it is perfect, but it's a really, really great start to have some guidelines for urban ag in Omaha. So for people who may not know, what's grown at City Sprouts? Is that food that is taken home? Is that food that is sold at markets in yeah. tents? It's an excellent question. So we have two types of production at City Sprouts. We have our two community gardens, one at our office uh, in North Omaha mm -hmm. and one at our South Omaha location. Those are open to the public. Anyone can come in, harvest anything they want. We welcome community members to stop by. We'll do the growing. Uh, we have a team of volunteers at our community gardens that grow the food and we like to share it with our neighbors. At our urban farm, 99% uh, of the produce we grow there goes to a food pantry in North Omaha called Bountiful Harvest through a food bank we have with the Food Bank for the Heartland, um, a partnership, excuse me, uh, which is really, really exciting. Um, so the other percent of that, uh, we do take home, right? And we give right. to our staff. Uh, we <laughs> got to enjoy the fruits of our labor too, right? So you have grown from a tenth of an acre to seven mm -hmm. acres in three years. What's the next step for City Sprouts? It's an excellent question. So we have this seven acre farm. We're growing on about two and a half acres now. Uh, we're looking to build a campus, right? To really develop this property. Uh, 2024, we'll be putting up a large greenhouse. We hope to have a barn, education center, and really make it a hub for people to come learn about urban ag in Omaha. What would you tell somebody that's you know, maybe they don't have a green, maybe like me, they have a black thumb, you know, <laughs> who, who, who really doesn't know how to get mm -hmm. started. What would you tell them? I would say nothing is easier, right? Um, and that's the great thing about being in Nebraska. We don't have the longest season, but, you know, from April until now, you can try to grow something. And even if you fail, try it again, you know? There are things like radishes. We can seed radishes 20 times throughout the season and have 20 harvests of radishes. Oh, wow. So never too late to try. All right, Aaron, thank you so much for joining us Absolutely. today. Absolutely. Still ahead this morning, grab the tartar sauce. There's a startup bringing fish farming to Nebraska. Ahead, the plans for a different kind of cash crop. Right now, a reminder that your comments are an important part of this show. If you want to be heard, you can email those comments to news at KETV.com. Remember, we love hearing from you. We'll be right back.